What if I told you that the best way to organize your files for video editing involved doing less or even stopping for a time? In this video, I'm gonna share my best tips on file structure, management, and organization that have helped me get to a place of peace with my files after struggling with it for the better part of 20 years. But first, let's talk about going to the gym. Gym person one decides they wanna start working out and they wanna do it perfectly. So they research all the best exercises so everything's optimized, they commit to going seven days a week, and while they're at it, they wanna overhaul their nutrition as well. So they do really great on day one, but how long do you think they last? My guess is a week tops. Gym person two takes a different approach. They commit to two to three times a week at the gym, they cut out most of the junk food in their diet, but they aren't too stressed about it, and they go on a nice long walk when they can. The key with person two is that they're consistent. While they may not become an elite athlete, by focusing on the important stuff and doing it consistently, they actually achieve most of the results they desire. This little story of going to the gym illustrates the power of the 80-20 rule, which states that 20% of causes create 80% of the outcomes. And this has been my file organization journey in a nutshell. So instead of trying to be perfectly organized and only achieving that a small fraction of the time, I try to focus on the top 20% of tasks that get me 80% of the way there, and I can do those consistently. First, let's answer the question, what should good organization help us accomplish? I've come up with four points. One, good organization should not impede our creative flow. Two, our media should always remain online in our editing software. Three, files should be easy to access for ourselves and our clients. And four, all of the actions should be simple and repeatable. We're gonna start off by taking a look at my folder structure. So you'll see here, there's nothing flashy. There's no colors, there's no icons, there's no numbers. There aren't many subfolders. There's simply a place for everything. And these categories have served me well the past few years, and I haven't really needed to adjust them. And now I'm gonna open up the folders and show you some sample files and what I might put in each one. So assets. This is a little bit of a catch-all, but a lot of times it has images, screenshots, or say a slate for a final online. I typically work with colorists, so I'm often delivering files to color and receiving files from color. So this folder would likely include color renders. Documents is a place for scripts, for storyboards, any other creative material that's in a document format. Exports, of course, has our rough cuts and our delivery, final movie files. GFX stands for graphic effects. I'm often referring to motion graphics and the design elements used to create those motion graphics. Media, of course, is our raw material, the footage and audio from our shoots. For most of the projects I'm working on, I usually collaborate with an audio post house so we're often swapping files. So the mix folder always includes the final mixes that they send me. Music will include audio files, either from a composer or from a stock library online. SFX will include any sounds from a sound effect library, whether your own library or an online subscription like Epidemic Sound. VFX stands for visual effects. I often work on projects that have visual effects elements. Their final renders will be stored in this folder. And finally, VO stands for voiceover. In addition to the audio we record on set, we often hire a voiceover talent to do the end art card for a commercial, and this is where I'd put those files. One quick tip, when you decide what folders work for you, keep an empty copy of them on your hard drive, and then every time you start a new project, copy and paste them over and your folders will be ready to go. Now let's take a look at my bin structure. One thing you should notice right away is that it matches my folder structure almost exactly, and that's by design. In fact, there's only a couple of differences we can look at here. First, there's no documents folder in my bins because I would never import a script into Premiere Pro, for instance. And there's also not an exports folder in my bins. And in the file organization, there's no sequences folder because sequences live in the editor. Besides that, they are identical. One quick tip with bins is to create a project template that has an empty set of bins. Then at the start of each project, you can start with your template and you'll have a fresh set of bins each time. When I'm starting a project, I feel like it's pretty simple to stay organized because there just aren't that many files yet. The problems arise for me when I'm mid-edit and adding files to my project and 99% of the time it comes from a download. So here's my process for dealing with files I'm downloading and adding to my project. You'll see I have Premiere Pro open, and I always have a few more things open right to the left of Premiere. One is a browser window, 
which currently has epidemic sound open. Two is a finder window that shows my downloads folder. So anything I download from my browser ends up here. And then a second finder window that has the file structure of the current project I'm working on. Let's say I'm going to download a new piece of music from Epidemic Sound. Click download. We'll see it shows up directly in the downloads folder. I'm gonna drag it right over to my music folder. Then I'm gonna drag it right over to my bin in Premiere Pro. And now we're ready to edit, our media will stay online and we're good to go. One alternate way to do it would be to drag it right over to your timeline. In this case, the music file shows up in the root of your bins, so you would just wanna drag it over to your music folder to stay organized. Now let's talk about sequence and file naming. I'm gonna open up my sequences bin. This is one of the only bins that has sub bins. One funny story is I've met so many editors without knowing anything about each other's organization strategies, we all ended up with a bin called underscore old. So please leave a comment below if you also ended up with an underscore old bin. Basically that just holds all the sequences we have that we're not currently working on. String out holds all the raw footage that I'm using for my edit. Delivery self-explanatory, they are sequences that end up being delivered to clients. But let's take a look at the actual file name. I always start with the date, and it's in a particular format. I do a four-digit year, a two-digit month, and a two-digit day. And this is so when you sort by name, they stay in numerical order. Then I do an underscore, a short description of the project, another underscore, and I add what I call a sequence code. And every time I make a new sequence, I up that number, 010203. So let's say a client is looking through all these different cuts on Frame.io and they leave a comment that says, I like the intro from sequence 04, but I like the ending of sequence 06. I can pull those up and know exactly what they're talking about. And let me give you a quick tip. Whenever you're gonna make any change, make a new sequence. It doesn't take up very much space and you can always go back to your previous work. Now let's talk about backups. You might have heard of the 321 rule, which states you should have three copies of your files on two different types of media, and one of them should be offsite. My first rule is that I always have clients keep a copy of their footage at their own location. If you're only editing for yourself, I recommend keeping one copy of your raw files offsite, maybe at a friend's house or at an office. Then I'm just editing off my own drives and I have those drives automatically back up to the cloud using software called Backblaze. Is my organization system perfect? No. But does it get me 80% of the way there with as few headaches as possible? Yes. If you're frustrated with your organization system, I recommend taking a break from it for a few days and use that time to try to figure out what are the most important tasks you can focus on that will get you 80% of the way there. Then start building habits and doing them consistently, and you'll get to the same file organization piece that I have. If you got value out of this video, please subscribe, and you might wanna check out my free editing guide at the link in the description. And now that you know how to organize files, you should watch this video next. Happy editing.